Hi, everybody. Um, we're coming to you from Calgary, Alberta today. Um, I am these guys' a teacher, and I'm just here in the background in case we need anything. So welcome. And um, yes, I started the recording. Thank you to all these wonderful sponsors. It is amazing to be able to do this presentation. I'm so excited to hear from my students, and I'm very impressed with the work that they've done. So I'm just going to let you guys post up where you're from. If you guys can use a little star or happy face. Whoop, wrong spot. There I am. Hi, Hi everybody. Oh look, the cat's coming. That is cool. Someone's from Florida. Mm -hmm. Or Georgia. I think that's Florida. But they'll also write it here. Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Arizona. North Carolina. South Carolina. All right, so it seems to be slowing down, so we're going to move on with the presentation. So I'd like Jared to begin, and they're just going to introduce themselves a little bit. <clears throat> My special learning needs are not being able to type the correct word, getting the idea out, and spelling. Organizing my thoughts, information or overload, don't know where to begin, too much information to understand at once, keeping track of my notes or supplies. And then Ronald's going to introduce himself. I'm Ronald, and my special learning needs are ADHD, inattentive, and anxiety. Tests are hard for me to write because it gives me too much anxiety, um, organizing my thoughts, information overload, like I forget the middle or the last step of instructions, uh, how the iPad helps me, and keeping track of my notes. Good job, guys. <laughs> All right, so our, we use our iPads 24-7, um, and I just want these guys to talk about how to use Notability. In Notability, you can draw at sticky notes. You can put PDFs into a note, which is a file. And you can add a picture or information from the internet and create files for your subjects. So these guys use it like a binder. Um, let me turn on the pointer. Um, and this side right here is, is an example of how they keep their binder. So they have their different um, subjects and the, underneath each one they have um, more dividers underneath where they put their notes. And then there's a list of just the notes they need right there. And this here is an example of how you can write and draw all over one document that's the same. And guys, what do you think it helps you with the most using Notability? Um, it helps me with my files and my writing. <laughs> what, what about your writing? It's um organizing or keeping track of your notes. Organizing and keeping track of my notes. Uh, Notability is not a free app. It is two dollars and ninety nine cents. But um, as a teacher, I've had fabulous response from them, and um, they're great about any time I have a problem or a glitch, they answer really really quickly. Um, and again, Ryland attends what we call 
bricks and mortar or regular school, and Jared is homeschooled. So it works in either setting. Um, so they use it as their binder for everything. Google Drive. In Google Drive, we can create products that you can share. In Google Drive, you can start new projects. You can add pictures and little text boxes for writing. And as as a side note, um, Google Drive, we've used over long distances to make sure that, um, one, I can edit. So um, I can work with Rylan, who's in his bricks and mortar school, even if I'm nowhere near him, and we can edit the same document. Whereas Jared and I have done brainstorming. What else have we done? Practicing new concepts as a group and we can see who's writing and, and be able to help each other out. We can also type questions back and forth. We've worked in a silent environment. Um, so that silent environment helps. It does, but then if somebody else has a question, we can just type it in Google Docs and then go back to what we were working on. We don't have to disturb anybody. Mm -hmm. The kids kind of like it that way. Dropbox allows the teacher to send you work that you can download into another app where you can work to do the work and then you can also submit it into Dropbox. In Dropbox you can send your teachers your complete work so then that they can look at it and you can send it in PDF form which makes it easier or makes using our apps easier. So Dropbox is kind of like uh, an exchange point. It's a little bit easier than Google Drive. So uh, I know some people are Google-based schools, but um, I just find Dropbox a little bit easier for transfer of information. Um, so they each have their own file inside Dropbox, and we just share one Dropbox as a class, and they can drop their, uh, their stuff in there or retrieve documents that I can't look, upload to other stuff. In Emoto, your teacher could can send you work And um, it has a actual submit button. In that model, you could look at videos your teacher sent to you to you or jokes, and you can hand in your work, and you can put things in your backpack, and you can make your own profile. So sometimes this works pretty good with anybody who has executive management issues, um, but they still need reminders to go and look. Um, typically, not always, depends on the student. Um, but yeah, I get them to check in every day by typing a joke at the top so that they have to come in and they want to know what the answer is. So every student has to put their guess in before I'll type the answer. So it gets everybody into Edmodo in the morning, um, especially my homeschooling students who aren't with me all day. So they find Edmodo a good way to keep track. And the progress bar is also good if they can't remember um, whether they've handed something in or they think they handed it in, but it only made it to their backpack. Um, Um, how do they know which which of these tools to submit their assignments? Um, everything comes into Edmodo. So if uh, an app won't connect directly to Edmodo, uh, like some of our ones that are coming up, then they'll do it through Dropbox because on the iPad, um, Google Drive is not as useful as it could be. 
and um, I don't want them to have multiple tools, so they just have multiple apps. I find that easier to manage. So then everything from Dropbox can go into Edmodo. Um, Dropbox and Notability aren't connected to Edmodo, but they do have that little, you know, the little box on it that has the out arrow, so that export function, they can export to Edmodo directly, yeah. Um, hopefully this video will play. If not, I put the link in there so you guys can go and see it after. But Rylan made this um, this stop motion video. Yeah. Okay. So, For integers. Math. Yeah. How to multiply integers. I did the writing so you can actually see my arm in the window. But it, you know those ones where you draw and it slowly becomes a final picture. That's what he did for this one. Unfortunately, it's not showing. It's a free app. Okay, and what do you use it for? So can I go back to this? Stop motion can make a video out of pictures. This was a project that I did in class, and it is also a alternative to writing a test which I have anxiety to writing tests. I put the link in the box for you guys. If you guys want to look at it after. Okay. All right, they also have explain everything which makes videos, and Jared's just going to tell you a little bit about how he uses it. In explain everything, you can duplicate pictures, move stuff around, and you can type in it. So it works really well for flipped learning. So you, and and the kids can create their own flipped learning videos too to show you how much they understand. But they can actually put pictures in there, put arrows right in it, record as they do it. There are some glitches with explain everything, and explain everything is not free, um, but it, it does work pretty good. Rylan likes to use iMovie, though. In iMovie, you can create movies for projects at school or a little at-home project. You can also create little, like, two-minute trailers. I use it to make movie, a movie and um, for school and a at-home movie project. But I like to make them short, not very long. And um, iMovie, for school, he used it as a book report. Um, and for the he's, monster's ring. For the monster's ring. And he's also done one on a history project. World War II of how it began and how it ended. Yeah. Instagram allows you to search for the information that you need. Insta um, you find some important information, you can pin it, and it'll keep it in the pins in the spot, or you can easily find it, and you can watch videos and look at images. Instagram is good, although it needs a login, so you have to manage those logins. My students have the same login across the board with the same password across the board. Um, so no matter what they're logging into, it's awesome, but it's also a kid-friendly environment in Instagram, so you're not going to come up with those questionable sites if they search the wrong word. Um, and this, the journaling function, which is what Rylan was talking about with pinning the information, fabulous. They don't have to remember where each piece it came from. If they've pinned it, they can go and find the bibliographic information or look at it again. Um, and each one of these yellow um, outcroppings from their main search, they can search those again and they will come up with another web. So it just gets a big and big and big spider web. Spider web, exactly. It's great for projects and they don't lose their information too. Sorry, we got kids playing with uh, with fidget toys at this end as well. Voice gym is something actually my husband discovered when he went to um, college. 
and I've started using it um, for these guys. But it requires an OCR or an optical character recognition PDF, so it's a special kind of PDF. Um, there are a couple of apps that you can use to change any PDF into an OCR. Um, but it's great, and as you can see on this picture, it's actually Rylan's social studies textbook from school. They provided it to him, and the voice dream will read it to him. And I can choose how fast or how slow, and I can zoom in so I can always see what it's reading to me so I don't get distracted with the other words. Yes, definitely good for, and it highlights the words as they read them so that ensure that you're following along. Spelling City is important because it helps you with your vocabulary and you can play different games at different grade levels. At different grade levels, I use it for spelling and my vocabulary. I play the alphabetized game because that is what helps me with spelling. We actually don't use this one in our class anymore because we tried it and it works great for some people, but um, my kids were there were too many steps for them, so to remember the spelling of the word and then to be able to play the game was just too much input at once. So they were just randomly clicking letters instead of actually practicing the spelling of the word. Um, so it worked really well for Rollin, but not for my other students. So this is a, a try and see kind of approach, and if you let them know that that's what you're doing, they will usually send you a free one week or 14-day or, um, trial. Math drills is important because it allows you to practice adding, subtracting, dividing, and multiplying. I use it for extra practice. My practice is a mix of all the operations together, and you get medals for a certain amount of questions at a fast speed, or however fast, and you can just do one of them at a time or two of them at a time. And adding and subtracting mixed together, and then the multiply and divide and mix together, and then there's the all of them mixed. And you can set up multiplying and dividing to a certain level of multiplication. So what he's talking about is you can actually um, customize the math drills that you're looking for. So if you want them only to practice 1 to 5 or 5 to 10 or only the 7 times table, then you can actually select just those parts for the kids to practice depending on what they need. So right now my kids are working on, of course we're in Canada, so they're working on metric conversion. So they're practicing their 10, right? So I have actually just whittled math drills down to only the 10 that they need to practice to be really good at that um, conversion that we're doing for metric numbers. Algebra time, I'm the only one who uses it because it's like $3. Um, if I remember correctly, you can use negative positive x tiles, regular tiles, and negative and positive for regular, and two x tiles, which are the big cubes, not the little cubes. Um, and you can change the colors. It is important to me because there are questions that I can't visualize in my head, so I use tiles for those questions. And not all my kids use this because it's an extra step. So it works really well for Rylan because he has difficulty visualizing the question, but other of my students, um, the visualizing is just one extra step that takes them out of doing the actual algebra. So it's, it's a balance that needs to be struck. Comic life. Comic life is important because you can create comics instead of drawing them. You can get pictures and you can choose how the comic looks. I use it to create comic books and have fun. I created a food comic once instead of drawing one and I made it with donuts. Um, also good use for book reports, um, history, um, timelines. There are so many uses. We use them for social stories, too. So um, when you're practicing social stories or they have a specific part of a social story that they'd like to tell, then that's where Comic Life comes in handy, too. In Tinker, there are lots of games that help you think of strategy, help yourself solve problems, for a better way of solving them. Also, it will teach you how to make games.
Um, Tinker is a programming app. So it's teaching kids the basics of logic and programming. So not all of my students love Tinker, but I do make them play around with it once in a while just because they're excellent skills to have. But we're a strategy-based classroom, so there's a strategy for everything. Tinker just helps um, kids with, um, with learning that logic. Jared, have you created any games with Tinker? Uh, no. No, Jared, have you? Ryan? I don't like Tinker. <laughs> yeah. See, it doesn't work for everybody, but that's okay. Jared's not quite at the level where he has created anything with Tinker yet. I find some levels of Tinker either too hard or too easy. But not in the middle. Yeah. Okay. So I like that in the middle, unless it's a game I like to challenge them. That's right. I've, I've tried to make games. And what happens? It's a little difficult. <laughs> it's a little difficult. So you kind of have to do all the play levels in order that that's the idea. Is you finish the play levels in order to create. Dictionary.com allows you to look up the words definitions. You can look up words in the dictionary and the thesaurus, and you can check if your spelling is correct. So there's the free version is what we typically use in class, but um, we use it for grammar lessons, we use it for editing and revising, which we call iteration. Um, they use it for, again, the thesaurus function. Um, and if you have the full version, if your school is willing to pay for it, um, they will actually read the word to them, which is awesome because sometimes it's just a pronunciation thing because they may not know until they've heard it that they actually know that word. So it's just a great go-to function that they usually have running in the background. And with the iPad, if you have things running in the background, um, don't forget that you have your four-finger swipe. So if you're using four fingers, you can swipe in between apps without having to close them and open them, close them and open them, or touch your home button all the time. So it just with, especially with dictionary.com, when you're just checking something and then going back, being able to swipe your four fingers is great. Oh, oh go. T-Flash is important because you can create flashcards so you can quiz yourself and you can quiz other people or get people to quiz you. I use it to quiz myself with trivia, multiple choice. And make flashcards. And Ryan makes flashcards as he goes. Um, so that it's kind of like a, that study tool as well. And um, we've offered them to his, to his regular classroom teachers to be able to share, because you can share the set. We've offered to share them, but nobody's taken us up on it yet. So we haven't had a chance to see if it would work. Um, so we've done it for like forces and structures. Um, have you used it for science this year? Yeah, I've used it for science. And for social studies. Jared, on the other hand, uses it as a strategy. So he has his parts of speech in there, for example, uh, and text features, um, so that if he forgets how to do something, it's really quick to go to G-Flash and just click on the one that he needs, and it tells him what the information he needs to know, and then he can go back to what he was working on. For G-Flash, I made science body systems, LA elements of fiction, and structures of, and forces flashcards. Flashcards. And, I, and I've made three cards for my science, 32 cards for LA, and 90 cards for my structures and forces. That was a big unit, yes. Kidblog allows you to post your blogs and see other people's blogs and comment on them. And what's your favorite part about blogging, Jared? Uh, you get to write awesome stories. Yeah, Jared really likes writing the stories function. Um, in Kidblog, I made I was the first person to make a blog out of a group because I did it over the summer when I was in Florida or when I came back from Florida after my vacation. And KidBlog is really cool to use. And you can choose if you want to share it or if you want to keep it to the group you're in. 
I think that's our kids' blog. I think I got that address right. I'm afraid to pop out of the window and jump and to grab it from somewhere else, but I can put it at the end, too. But again, my students who normally hate to write love to write for other people, and especially because they're not handwriting. So we do our planning and everything in Notability, and then we do our next iteration, um, and we have get feedback from everybody, and we can do that in Notability, or they have a Google Drive file that they can they can just get that um, feedback from distance, and then once all that's done, they submit it, I read it, and then they're allowed to publish it on KidBlog. So there's a few steps, but we do that every week. Um, so you know, in the four days that I see them. Um, in the four days that they see them, they produce a blog. Um, this week they actually used Explain Everything to produce a blog, so we'll be turning them into videos on Monday. So hopefully if you guys remember, please check it out on Monday. Um, I send out a link every single week using the Google sh uh, URL shortener um, so I can see how many people have clicked on it. Um, I do that so that I can get an idea. But I also do that because I send it out with the, the hashtag comments for kids, and then other people can check out our blog. And they know we're a little bit of a small class, so it's a little bit different, um, but we're always looking for interactions. And I'm going to admit, I put the wrong picture on here for, comp, or for Book Creator, but their books do go into iBooks. <laughs> Book creator is important because you can make little books if you want to make a book for your teacher, or you can just make a book for the fun of it. I used it. I use book creator to make books for my teachers for a book project, which was what I what I think my future would look like, which is. What happened, which was me in the past, me now, and then me in the future. And we've used Book Creator um, when we go on field trips because my everyday kids are homeschooled, so we have a little bit more flexibility. So in the fall, for example, we went looking for um, features of fall, and they took hundreds of pictures. And when I brought them back, they organized it using other picture apps like Pic Collage and Camelab. But then they put it into Book Creator and created stories or added inspirational quotes to those photos. And then they can publish those books into iBooks. iDesign is important because you can make different shapes for geometry. You can save them and you can have it show you the different angles and the degrees. I use it for mostly my geometry only. So Rylan has difficulty with fine motor skills, so the iDesign app was key, especially when he was learning to draw um, circles, um, because the concept of the compass plus the paper, plus it was just one step too many. So his teacher said there's no way he could possibly do geometry any way but paper, and I managed to find an app that proved him wrong. So iDesign was really awesome. I explained to them why I needed access to the app, and they let me have one free um, one free download so I could check and make sure that it worked, and then I had my students buy it. So it works out well for the app designers as well. Okay, they have a couple of more apps that didn't have slides that they want to talk about, so I'm just going to let them talk for a minute if you guys don't mind. Calc Pro is important because you can do math calculations and you can use a physics calculator and a bunch of other calculators. I use it for math. The other key thing about Calc Pro is that they can see all the steps that they typed in, so you can see where they made a mistake. It's really good at showing all the steps. Another really good calculator app is called JCalc Free. You can do like um, the regular numbers, you can do positive and negative, percentage, fractions, decimal, and yeah. Um, iBooks is a digital app, a book app, which allows you to bookmark your chapter without losing your bookmark, and you can highlight the words and push the speech button, which allows it to read to you, which I use better. 
the other students, like, um, because I'm not a fast reader. And well, we also use it because you can um, highlight as you go. You can add notes. So if your teacher tells you this part was important because Rylan can add it to a note. Yeah. Um, now in Alberta, it's up to each teacher whether they're recorded or not. Um, so most of them do not agree to be recorded, which kind of limits some of the stuff that we can do with the iPad. But yeah. um, if you can, you can also push the record button and you can record your thoughts in that highlighted note. Um, the great thing is, is it will also sort by just notes. So if you're trying to, I knew this note was somewhere, but um, but I can't remember where, it'll just show you just your notes so you can figure it out. Um, also, you can put comic books to the slide or you can put PDFs. Yeah, put PDFs in there and Siri will read them to you. Khan Academy is important because you can watch videos from math. And I like the videos. They helped me a lot in the past. Um, and then you can do questions. And the video I watched that I can remember is equivalent fractions for an example. Um, I use it to learn how to do math because I'm not good with algebra. So that's what I mostly use it for. And I have watched math videos before I go to bed so I can remember them. Yeah, I always teach my kids is that last few minutes before you go to bed that you will remember. Um, so it's really great. Um, personally, I use Edpuzzle to help bring down those Khan Academy videos um, so that they have just the part that they need, especially if they're struggling with one part. Um, so Edpuzzle is a great app that lets teachers do four things. One, you can shorten your clip because Scientifically, they've shown, depending on the developmental level, kids tune out, tune out after about a minute and thir or two minutes and 13 seconds. So um, it allows you to bring down the size of the video. The next thing it allows you to do is if you don't like the recording that's there, you can re-record the whole video telling them what information you want to go with those pictures. The third thing is um, just an audio clip. So if you want to add your comments to the beginning or to the end, or you want to point something out specifically and you want them to listen to it, you can do that. Then the last thing about Edpuzzle is they can um, actually do a quiz while they watch and it won't let them skip ahead. So they have to answer the questions and it'll let them rewatch just the clip that includes the answer to that question. So I can add two or three multiple choice, open ended, or even um, just comment on something if I need them to rewatch, make sure you, you've understood this, you know, stop and come explain it to Mandy, um, however I want them to deal with that part. There's another one called Zaption that does the same thing. I just like Edpuzzle because there's an app to go with it. And you can connect it to your Edmodo. In messages, your teacher can send you messages. In iMessages, you could, with iMessages is the same as messages, but you could text your teacher and ask her a question if this is correct by taking a picture or asking the teacher for help. So we haven't had much success in getting the teachers on board with, uh, the sorry, the bricks and mortar teachers that I have met with on board with messages. But you can use, um, you don't have to use your phone number. You can use an email address because I'm assuming if you're using iPad in the classroom, you're using a Wi-Fi environment. So in iMessages, if you're just using an email address, you can send information back and forth. So every once in a while, I'll get a text message pop up on my Mac screen from Ryland saying, I didn't get this, who do I go ask? And then I can give him the strategy that he needs. Um, same thing with my students. I did this for homework and they'll send me a screenshot and I'll go, okay, but you missed this part. And then they'll be able to finish whatever they're working on. So iMessages comes in handy. Sometimes during the day I ask Mandy, because she tutors me at night, I ask her if we could work on this first when we start. Yeah, it helps keep track of things that he needs to do, too. First. Um, the next one we have is Classcraft. Now, this one is a Canadian invention, um, but there are other things out there. 
Um, but Classcraft looks like Warcraft. And um, in Classcraft? In Classcraft, you can have, you have to survive, level up, for reward. You can earn coins by training your pet. And then you can use those coins to buy clothes, like special outfits for your character, and special powers. For me, I'm waiting to level up to 18, which is max level, and saving up my coins, so then that way I can buy a summoner. Oh, that's true. So, Classcraft, again, it looks like Warcraft, and then they get um, hit points or health points, which is where I can take stuff away. So, if they didn't do their homework, they didn't come with their iPad charge, they didn't come with strategy didn't use your strategies, or they didn't um, come with their stylus, for example, because I don't let them write with their fingers. Um, I still want them to keep that fine motor. I make them write with their styluses. So that allows me that ability to just show them that it does have an impact on them. But the plus side is where they go up level. So they get, for, and you can customize it any way you want. So for example, my guys get 100 points if they were positive and they aim for extraordinary. So for extraordinary would be like a level four if you use a one to four system. Um, it also lets me add 75 points if they help the classmate that day. Um, 25 points if they use the strategy without grumbling about it. Um, you know, they can get points for doing really well on an assignment and you can pick which assignments and it lets you actually enter an entire grade book. Um, and they, um, they Typically say your kids should work in groups of six um, as a team and they can heal each other and if one of their teammates dies and the whole team um, takes a hit, they have their uh, coins in the middle version um, that they can use to buy other stuff or gain points. But um, Classcraft, we're also using it. So at Christmas time, we started in November and by the end of December they had to get to level three in order to go to the Hobbit. Or not the Hobbit. Yeah, the Hobbit. The last movie of the Hobbit. And now they're earn they start in January at level three, and they're aiming for level fifteen at the beginning of May because they want to go see Avengers: Age of Ultron, which is my favorite kind of movie. Actually, most of my kids' favorite kind of movies, right? So we work towards those things. But along the way, they every time they level up, they earn coins and they earn a new pet and that kind of and stuff. And you can actually get hands with stars in them, and that's how you get your powers. And in every team, there's a healer, a warrior, and then there's the mage. The mage or the sorcerer, yeah. Yeah. They are very powerful incentives in our class. Um, trust me, none of them want it taken away, so they have to use paper. Pick collage is something we used for a project, and they've played around with it since then, but Jared wants to tell you a little about it. In Picos, you can add photos and then can edit them. Add backgrounds to the photos and then you can share it. We shared it with each other. We also shared it with Book Creator. You can also import it into a notability note. Um, you can show flow of matter, for example, or, or water cycle. Um, there's lots of different things you can do with that one. Thing link, um, we're still practicing with, but it looks really cool, and so far it's worked really well for us. Thing link lets you read about the pictures that other people post. So on Thing link, it's a website, but it's also an app. Um, it lets you take a picture, for example, or a map, and then um, somebody can add pins to it, and then click, it allows you to click out to other things, which is really cool. Voice class is important because you can record your voice and if you don't want people to hear what your voice sounds like on the recorder, you can change it to sound different. So like sometimes you can choose it's a dark voice, Doctor Who, Darth Vader, a lady fan, or you can reverse it, which is funny. Not very useful, but funny. Yeah, and it's, there's a whole bunch of other ones too. Different voices, yeah. yeah. Riley, um, when he's making movies and stuff, he doesn't want his classmates to hear his voice. So with uh, Voice Plus, he can change it and it takes away that anxiety. Um, <coughs> bless you. 
And so at this point, we'll open it to any questions from the audience. Um, in Voice Plus 2, you can get the free version, which allows you to get like um, like maybe five, six voices to use, and then the rest cost money, which is one ninety nine for the rest. So it's That's a pretty good, good price. <laughs> um, Rylan goes to regular school. Sorry, thought of something else before we open it up um, to questions. Rylan goes to um, quote unquote regular school. So he uses TinyScan because we found that not all classroom teachers are supportive of his iPad. And in fact, some of his classmates have accused him of quote unquote cheating because he has his iPad in front of him. And I really wish um, classroom teachers would understand that it's not a cheat. It's how he's um, seen as quote unquote a regular student. So um, TinyScan works really well because if they won't provide the documents to him, he can take charge of his own learning. He can uh, scan them in to PDF so that he can get them into Notability and work on them. Um, students in my class also think that it's cheating when you take pictures of notes on the board. So tiny scan also helps because I can crop it and make it look different. Um, I, in my opinion, I would recommend this other app called Cam Scanner and Tiny Scan, but the thing about Cam Scanner, it when you put it in Notability, it always says in the bottom right corner, generated by Cam Scanner, and you can't get rid of it. So Tiny Scan has a couple of more options yeah. that, and get rid of that little annoying phrase right. in the bottom corner. Tiny part. Scan is more expensive than Cam Scanner, so it has they both have their ups and downs. Yeah. And thank you, Pat, and my students. It's a focus of ours to be um, able to self-advocate because it's not just a school skill, it's a lifelong skill. So like I said, we're a strategy-based, and um, we push kids being able to explain what they use, why they use it, and, um, and, and why it helps with their special learning needs. So are there any questions about the apps that we've talked about? All right, they're leaning in over my shoulders to see what you have to say. <laughs> Thank you. I am totally saving this chat for them. Ah, Jared, your favorite app. Um. Tinker. Tinker. <laughs> Rylan, your favorite app? My favorite school app would be Notability. Now, my favorite fun app would be this new game my social studies teacher introduced me would be Warlight. It's kind of like Risk. You have to think with like a, it's like a brain break game. <laughs> so you're not the only one that likes Tinker, Jared. As a teacher, I like Edmodo, just in case anyone was wondering. I know there are other um, things out there called uh, like haiku and stuff. I just have found Edmodo was the one I learned at ISD, and it did all the things I needed to do, so I didn't bother checking out the other options. Um, and again, I didn't include it here, but I'll write it really quick if I can get this to work. There we go. Oops. Or if you want to reach the students, that way you guys can uh, can ask us any questions. We are always here to share information. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you.